What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another Genshin Impact video. Today I wanted to talk to you guys about my daily routine. I know a lot of you guys wonder like, D, what do you do every day? You know, you're one of the highest level people on the server. I don't understand how you're still getting XP. It doesn't make any sense. How are you level 43 already or AR 43? Tell us, tell us the secrets. And my usual response is, well, because I'm a content creator, all you gotta do is just make a YouTube video. Just say, hey, what's up? I'm the best. Send it to me, Hoyo, and guaranteed level a day, right? <laughs> and obviously, like, that's a joke, right? But basically what I do is there's, like, a system. There's a method to my madness that you guys can apply every single day. Um, there's certain things that I prioritize over other things to help keep things efficient for me. Um, I don't run any crazy routes. Uh, I'm sure by now, if you guys have heard, there's like chess routes, respawnable chess routes, and all that other stuff. Uh, but the way I look at it is like if I wanted to go to work, then I would just stop playing games. <laughs> so I try to keep this as enjoyable as possible uh, when you know when I'm going through the world and exploring. Um, I gotta say that personally, after doing uh, quite a few beta tests, I am not super big on the chess grind. I'm just not. Uh, my my attitude on chess is I'll get them when I get them, <laughs> right? Because they're not going anywhere. Yeah, there's some that'll respawn, and those are pretty plain sight chess anyway. And you'll find those, but that is definitely, definitely not one of my daily routines. And once you guys get to 40, uh, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. But once you guys get to 40, you guys can, you know, knock that out, get away from your post-traumatic chess disorder. <laughs> <laughs> post-traumatic chest finding disorder and just let that go there'll be some withdrawal symptoms some cold sweats probably some tears and the shakes but you guys will get over it because there's more to this game after you guys get done finding all the chests in the world so every day when i log in the first thing that i do guys is i look at my book uh this is the first thing i do this is kind of like just my my guiding stars kind of my compass as to what i'm going to do for the day uh, when I hop in, I look at my stuff, I look at if any of the materials are relevant to what I need. So I'm looking at Cecilia Garden, I'm looking at the Hidden Palace of Leon Shan, so I can see if any of these materials are materials that I need for my character's weapon ascension. If the answer is no, and I don't need either one of these materials, but I happen to need these, so I'll get these later. But if the answer is no, then I'll then proceed to the next part. And I'll say, well, okay, well, do I need talent books? Uh, obviously, I need Blessings of Freedom, because, you know, I'm trying to get ready for Klee. So then I'll be like, okay, I'll go do that. Or if any of the characters that I'm building also utilizes any of these materials. So, for instance, if I'm building Chi Chi and I need to go to Tai Shen, then I'll go to Tai Shen and I'll do this. If the answer is no again, then the next thing I'm going to do is then go to my bosses and see what I need to farm out today. So am I doing cubes? Do I need ascension level materials? Do I need any of these materials to farm for my characters? Do I need any gear from these bosses? So on and so forth. And that's basically what I'm going to knock out. While I'm doing these, I'm also looking at the map to look for my dailies, right? So that way I can knock out my dailies and, you know, whatever else it is that I'm doing at the same time. Now, what I will say is post level 40, it's really just going to depend on what you need. So for instance, if I'm below level 40, my primary focus is ascension mats, weapon materials, things that are going to prepare me. And I normally like to prepare for the next level up. So let's say, for instance, that I'm working on this bow. My bow just hit level 50, and I'm curious to see what the next ascension level is. Typically speaking, I will always collect my materials so I have everything that I need ahead of time for the next ascension if I'm below level 40. Once I hit level 40, things change a little bit because the priority is not ascension materials as much. Just because I have such a long time that I have to wait, adventure ring 50, before I'm able to even ascend at all anyway. So could I go ahead and get these ahead of time? Sure, but chances are I could probably wait until, you know, 48, 49, where it's taking me four, five, six days to get a level anyway, right? And then at that point, you know, I can then start preparing because I have plenty of time to get my materials. Does that make sense? If I've done all of that, whether I'm 30 or 40, then the next question I, I ask myself is what do I need to do next? And most of the time that falls in line with my gear. Pre-40, I'm looking for four-star equipment. So if I'm 30, AR 30 to AR 40, my daily routine is normally just to farm the bosses like the cubes and the plants to make sure that I get enough material for ascension alongside getting a bunch of gear. So if you guys find yourself lacking on gear, that's probably what you should be farming. I don't even bother farming any types of gear domains pre-level 40 just because it's a waste. Because if you spend a ridiculous amount of experience or resin or anything just trying to get a four star gear just for some set bonus, it's going to hurt you I think overall just because as soon as you get to 40 and you're able to get 
five star gear anyway, you're going to have to replace this. And all of the resin that was spent here could have been spent in other places, like like ascension material dungeons, dungeon domains to get your talent books and stuff like that. Um, that's where I think your resin is best spent pre-level 40. If you're post-level 40, then the question you have to ask yourself is what do you need? What type of gear do you need? What does your ideal set look like on a particular character? And that's something that I'm thinking about now. I'm like, okay, do I want to run Bloodstained? Okay, well, if I want to run Bloodstained, what dungeon do I need to farm? Do I need Wanderer's Troop? I'm like, okay, well, if I, I need Wanderer's Troop, I should probably do in World Bosses. In every single situation, I try to think about what's the problem that I, I'm having now? Like, what's the challenge that I'm facing? And how do I solve that that challenge or prepare myself so I don't have to run into this challenge again. The primary challenge that I have now is that I get I'm getting five star gear but I don't have enough junk artifacts to feed it. So thinking about how to get the best bang for my buck after that point I'm looking at how do I farm the domains. So I'm looking at combining the gear that I need. So let's say I look at, okay, I want to do Bloodstain, just for example. And this is the dungeon I'm actually farming now. This place at a level 40 dungeon drops like six to eight artifacts per run at only 20 resin per run. It makes it more valuable for me to do this, especially since I don't really need any Ascension materials right now. For anything else, it's more valuable for me to do this to get artifacts so I can level up my gear than it's going to be for me to do anything else. Now, you can substitute this domain farming if your challenge or your problem that you're running into is the lack of mora then of course you could do ley lines post 40 if you're not 40 yet chances are you still have chests and stuff like that you guys can open challenges open world quests to get more and stuff like that or you guys can find more other ways like utilizing sigils so on and so forth but post 40 when you don't have all that little stuff to do then this is where ley lines are going to start to come into play and this is something that i take into consideration as well if i need character xp and or mora and it just makes more sense because that's the challenge that i'm facing then that's what i'm going to do for that particular day and then just grind that out in the meantime in between time I'm always keeping an eye on how much resin I have and how many replenishes I have for the day if you guys don't know you guys can hit this plus button here and with that plus button you'll have the option to buy resin with primos I just have to say if you guys are pay to win you should definitely be buying your re uh, your refreshes every single day period um, if you guys are slight free to play um, and you guys are just more focused on summons I still recommend doing one refresh a day just the cheap one the 51 and then be done if you guys are pure summons you don't care about progression then, then don't spend any resin just you know do your summons and do you but that's what I look at. I try to make sure to balance how much resin I have, how many refreshes I have for the day within the activities that I feel will benefit me the most at the time. If I'm out of resin, then what I look at is my fragile resin and I ask myself if I want to use this for the day. If it's a yes, I go for it. If it's a no, then I'll save it. Typically speaking though, I'm spending it. <laughs> right now, I'm just kind of chilling. I just happened to have got those two today after I dinged uh, AR-43, so that's why those are still in my inventory. But I've been using my resin all throughout and my resin refills just to hurry up and level and as fast as I can. After I do all that, the next thing I'm going to be looking at is the Abyss, right? Abyss is a great way for those of you guys who maybe haven't been here yet. This is an amazing way to get Primo Gems if you guys haven't been doing this because this is a free resource that you can do as much as you want. Obviously, it's going to be based on how well you put your team comps together and how well your characters are geared. Um, but this is a place that I'm coming to see, you know, if I need to do any floors. This rotation, I was able to clear floor 11. I made it to floor 12. Um, I wasn't able to get in there because I didn't get enough stars here. I didn't have the right team comp, but I'll make sure to solve that issue the next rotation. After all of that is done, it, I, I come right back to my adventure book and the next question I ask myself is, is there anything else that I need to farm? If I'm out of refreshes, if I'm out of everything, if, I'm, if this is, I've done abyss, I cleared everything, I don't know what to do with my life. The next thing I'm looking at is what materials do I need? If there's any particular materials that I need either in Mondstadt or Leoa, uh, this is where I look at, you know, so then I can kind of offset my progression a little bit. So for instance, one thing that I know that I do need is I need Leyline Sprouts. So I might do a couple of rounds and go find, you know, some of these Abyss Mages so I can smash out and try to get some of these. Or I might go kill some mini bosses because at AR35+, plus these guys start to drop purple artifacts, which could definitely help me, you know, get more food to feed my current artifacts that I'm trying to level up. After that, I just chill. I log off, I go play something else, go spend time with the family, and that's pretty much it. And for those of you guys who are busy out there and you guys are still trying to stay relevant and still trying to progress, you can keep progression really to a minimum by just doing your dailies and your resin refreshes every day. And you can still get quite a bit of XP without doing all the craziness like finding chests and all that other stuff. Although, 
this stuff definitely does help. Pre-level 40 is really all just about doing your the same routine that I'm talking to you guys about doing, but also including like treasure hunting and finding all the challenges and discovering hidden quests and world quests and all that other jazz. But once you're done with all of that, the next steps are really just getting that routine in place, you know, finding your flow and just one, two, three, go. That's it. And then after you do that, guys, uh, just stay consistent. As updates come and new heroes roll out, like with Klee probably coming here pretty soon, you'll find that it's a lot easier to manage your resources and get through the game. So anyway, guys, uh, hopefully this answered a lot of your guys' question. Uh, a lot of people continue to ask me like, yo, D, how do you level so fast? What do you do every day? What's your routine? How come, you know, <laughs> why do we feel like you're doing something crazy? Are you doing Genshin steroids? Like, <laughs> you know, what's the difference between your account and my account? So again, I just want to offer you guys a simple breakdown as to what my daily activities look like. So you guys can understand, you know, where what I do every single day. So if you want to apply this to your game, you definitely can. Take what you guys like, leave what you don't, and then always, always, always make yourselves better. So if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know in the comment box below. And we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.